please take the time to read the full warning message of this video. This video is meant for educational purposes only. Watch you guys, today we're taking a look at how to optimize Windows 11 for better performance. Now, this program I've covered before, but it's had quite a few updates done to it, so I wanted to take a look at it again. I'll leave the link in the video description. It's called Optimizer. It's a very powerful tool, so you always want to make sure you back up your data and take a restore point before you use this sort of tool. It's powerful enough to disable a lot of features that people don't need or require, but some people may need these programs, so be very careful on what you disable. But before we continue, let's have a word from today's sponsor, CD Key Sales. Now, CD Key Sales, if you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then use the links in the video description. Use my promo code, capital B, capital R09, apply this to your order, and then you can go over to the change product key on your Windows operating system, paste in that key and click next. And then it will activate your version of Windows 10 Pro or Windows 11 Pro. Links are in the video description. So we've got the program downloaded. And what we're going to do is open up the program here. And it's called Optimizer. You should see it loading up here. Now, this is quite a powerful program. So be very careful on what you uh, toggle on here because if you disable a feature that you require it's not going to work and uh, you always want to make a restore point before you continue with any of this sort of stuff so if you don't like it you can always revert back to a time when it was working properly I always create a restore point call it clean or something like that by default it's turned off so you might want to turn it on by pushing configure and then giving yourself a bit of space here click apply and OK and then create a restore point uh, that way you can always revert back if something goes wrong. Always back up your data as well, just to make sure, just in case. So I'll call this one clean. You can put a date in there or whatever you want to do and click create and it will create a restore point. So as I've said before, there is plenty of features on this program that some people may require. So be careful. Don't just follow my tweaks here that I'm doing. I'm just showing you a tutorial on how this program works. Now, by toggling these on, it's going to enable some tweaks like performance tweaks. It's also going to disable some features like network throttling, and it will also disable Windows Defender, Smart Screen, and other things like this. So be very careful what you turn off. There is telemetry ones in here. So if that worries you, you can toggle these on to disable the telemetry inside Office, uh, Visual Studio, uh, Mozilla, and Google Chrome, and other browsers like that. So be careful on what you turn off here, because like I said, some people may require uh, the print service and there is a print service there. So if you go toggling all these on, it's going to disable a lot of this stuff. So bear that in mind when you are playing around with this sort of stuff. Again, if your PC is working perfectly fine and you don't need to tweak it and you don't want to use programs like this, then by all means, don't use them. What I think this program is good for is when you do a fresh install and you do that quite a lot. Uh, for a lot of PCs, maybe you work in the IT industry. And what you want to do is set these up very quickly and you can just toggle these features on and off very quickly and get it set up the way you want it. And then of course, once you've got that set, you're good to go. So you can see here under the windows tab, there was quite a few uh, things here, which is like restore the file explorer, disable start menu ads, uninstall OneDrive and other things like that. Now, if you're using OneDrive, then by all means, don't disable it. Otherwise, you're going to end up losing OneDrive. You can re-download it and get it installed on the system again. Now, again, there is plenty of features on here that a lot of people probably won't use, and you can toggle these on and disable them. There is handy little uh, pop-up boxes that will tell you exactly what these features do, and you can take your time and read these to let you know what it's going to actually do when you toggle this on. This is going to turn off any feature updates. So if you don't want feature updates from Microsoft, you can toggle that on. You will still receive your security updates. If you don't understand what that means, then probably best leave it alone. You can disable widgets, chat, and other things that you may not require. Snap Assistant, if you don't use it, you can turn it off. And there's a bunch of other bits on here as well. There is stuff about uh, Xbox. So if you're using Xbox Live or Game Bar or any of those features, then leave them alone. If you don't want them, turn them off. Disable uh, telemetry services here, enhance privacy, and there's a bunch of other settings on here like disable Cortana and other sensor services and other things like that, which you can toggle on and disable. 
This, this video is not about what you should disable on your system. This is just showing you how the program works. Everyone has their own requirements. So don't just follow what I'm doing in this video. Follow what you want to do on your system and then make your own choices. That way you can uh, be responsible for your own actions. This is a useful little area, uninstalled unwanted UWP apps. So if you don't want the Microsoft people or Microsoft OneDrive or any of these ones, you can check mark the ones you want and uninstall them. You can select all and remove all, but be careful. There is ones in here that are related to your camera. And if you use your camera, it's going to stop working. So bear that in mind, take your time and just look through the list and make sure you only remove the ones that you want to remove. So once you've done this, you can then click on the uninstall and it will uninstall them. For instance, Windows Maps, if you don't use those, you can uninstall them and it just makes it a lot easier. Windows Store is in there. So if you use the Windows Store, don't select all and uninstall because you're going to lose the ability to use the Windows Store because it's going to remove it. Again, we're looking at the startup items here. You can take your pick and check mark what you want. Yours may look different on your system. This is a virtual machine. As I always do on these testing videos, I use a virtual machine just to show you so I don't keep messing up my own computer. When you're seeing these settings here, you can go into common apps and choose which applications you want to download. This is really useful for people that are installing Windows on a regular basis and they want to get it set up as quick as possible. You can check mark all of the applications that you want to be installed on that system and also select all the .NETs and uh, the DirectX and a bunch of other things on here that you may require. Just going to go through here and show you a bunch of applications here that you may require. There's loads of them in here and there's plenty to choose from. So I'm pretty sure this is pretty much the standard uh, sort of programs that most people would use. For instance, uh, uh, Origin and other type of game applications here. We've got uh, FileZilla, we've got GitHub, we've got GIMP, we've got uh, Spotify, and loads of other things on here like Audacity and, and things like that. Once you click the download and choose your uh, bit version, it will download these. Now, if I put the check mark in install after downloading, it will go ahead and install these. But because I'm doing a tutorial here, I'm going to leave that bit out so it doesn't then take a load of time. But it will download these and just automatically install them for me if it was check marked. But I've left that check mark out. Now you should see uh, some information down the bottom here. So you can just go ahead and see this warning. It will tell you exactly what this is. No 64 bit available, downloading 32 bit. And then again, it's going to go ahead and uh, allow you to go to this location. Now, if I had this check mark, like I said, it would automatically start downloading and installing them afterwards. You can go to the download location, uh, which is located here. And this will give you all of the uh, download files that you've just downloaded in its own little directory folder here. And you can manually install these if you want to at a later date. But if you want to install them straight after downloading, you would just leave that check mark in there. Pretty simple stuff. There is a direct link here when you click on it, which you can click on go to downloads and it will take you straight there as well by just clicking on this button like so. So very useful stuff. Let's move on to the next section, cleaner. In here, you can see temporary files uh, and a bunch of other areas it's going to clean like the cache, cookies, history, sessions and passwords from your browser. Remember, if you do start cleaning your browser history and passwords, it's going to remove all the passwords from your browser. So if you don't have those stored somewhere, you will have to re-enter all those passwords for your browser. Moving on to the pinger here, you can basically ping your uh, domain name that you want to test your network with to make sure that you're getting uh, good internet uh, returns here. So I can click on ping here and you can see success. Uh, latency is 13 milliseconds, 11 milliseconds, and so on. And it will tell you here, and it's uh, an average time of 12.33 seconds to do a round trip there. So pretty good uh, ping there. So you can open up your network connections and flush your DNS as well. And you can also test your network from here and export this, which is pretty useful if you want to send this to your ISP and say, look, I'm having issues with my network. So moving on to the host area, a lot of people like to block certain domain names and IP addresses. Paranoid Pete's out there that love to block a lot of Microsoft IPs. 
they'll go on the internet and find a bunch of lists of IP addresses and domain names that they think are tracking and collecting telemetry from them and go in here and add them into the hosts file. If you want to go ahead and waste your time with that, by all means, that is there as well. And you've got fixed common registry issues here. And this will be task manager command prompt, control panel, folder options, run dialog, and also right click menu, windows firewall and registry editor. And uh, you can just also restart your Explorer. Moving on to the hardware, this will just give you the hardware list and it will give you some information about the hardware on your PC. And then moving on to the integrator here, you can see here integrator is able to add fully customized items to your desktop or right click context menu. So you can add them uh, by just adding them inside here, depending on what you want to add. And you can add a modify, you can delete and uh, also ready menus and run dialogue. You can add a bunch of stuff in here. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Add power menu, also add system tools, add Windows apps and so on. And this will add these to your right click context menu. You can add take ownership as well. And this will add the uh, take ownership to your right click context menu. So if you want to take ownership of a folder, you can right click on it and then take ownership of it. And uh, you can define your custom run commands inside here if you want to add these as well. So they're, they're there for you as well. So that is it really moving on to the options area. If you want to change the cool color schemes on your program, you can do this quite easily by putting the radio buttons in the required color scheme that you prefer. So a pretty useful little program, this optimizer. I've done some upgrades on it. I do like it and a pretty useful little app. Down here, you can see Discord support, open source, and uh, the Dead Moon. I think that's the creator. I'm not too sure. Uh, but that's the information down on the bottom right-hand side there. So pretty useful little app. And uh, pretty impressed with it, really. Very useful. And uh, this is on Windows 11, by the way. It does work on Windows 10 as well. Anyway, I hope this has been some sort of use to you. I'll leave all the information in the video description. So a pretty cool little application to add to your USB flash drive for part of your uh, USB toolkit. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to Geo Sam, Welsh Tony One and Albert Houston. You guys rock. You've joined my tier three group. I really do appreciate it. Also, I just want to say a quick shout out to all my other YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I also appreciate you as well. Don't forget, if you've joined my Discord server and you are a YouTube member, like these then you need to let me know in the general chat and i will give you the appropriate role thanks again for watching bye for now